When we are composing music for a video, we should be able to work with that video inside the dough in which we are writing the score. And in this tutorial, we are going to see how we can do that in Cakewalk by BandLab. In order to compose music for a short film, I was given this video file. Now if I were to drag this, like I would drag an audio file into Cakewalk, only the audio data of that file will be imported. And for someone who is composing music for a video, they would probably need to see it. So to do that, I'm gonna bring my mouse and place it at the very bottom end of this area here and then click and drag it down, which is going to reveal the video track strip. Now if you are seeing something else, don't worry because there are two other track strips in the same area and the video track strip is the last one. So this is where we are going to bring the video file. We can either go into file, then import and then click video here to import the video file like this or we can simply drag it from here into this space. Oh and these are the video file formats that Cakewalk supports. Alright, the video file is added now but we are not seeing it here because the video thumbnails are currently hidden. So I'm going to move this away a little bit to reveal these two buttons. One of which is the show thumbnail button and the other one is to show the frame numbers which you can see here. Now obviously we should be able to play back this video in some kind of window, right? But if we go to the views, we will not find any video window or anything like that in here. And that is because we are currently using the basic workspace, which does not include that window. So we're going to change that. Anything other than basic will work. So I'm just going to change it to advanced. Let me get rid of the browser and inspector. We also don't need to see the arranger and tempo tracks. Now that we are not using the basic workspace, the shortcut we will work to toggle the video track strip. So now if we go to views, we can find video in here. We can click that or use this alt shift 2 shortcut or we can simply double click on this video thumbnails pane. And here we have the video preview window. Like any other window, we can also dock this one into the multi-dock. And of course, if you have a second display or screen, you can move this window to that screen in order to have a full screen visual while you're working on its music. Now, if we right click inside the video view, we get some options, the first of which is animate, which if we disable, will not play back the video. So we will have to keep this animate enabled. Then the next option is insert, which is the same as import. But now if we import a new video, this old one will be replaced by the new one. Only the video track will be replaced, the audio will still be there and a new audio track will be added from the new video. And then this delete of course removes the video from this project, but it will not remove this audio track. Then we have stretch options. I usually keep it at stretch to window so that, you know, the video stretches the way I resize it. And then we have the different time display formats which is shown here. And yeah, we can simply click here to switch between the different time formats. Then we have the option to change the background color which I think should change the color in the background here. For some reason it's not changing in my system but it's not a problem. And then we can take a look into the video properties which of course shows the information regarding the video file we imported into the project. And in here we have video settings which we are going to skip for now but we will take a look into in just a moment. Now let's see what all options we get when we right click the video thumbnails pane. So here we have show or hide thumbnails which is the same as this one and then absolute display frames which is this. And then open video view which of course opens up this video window and then we have insert video which we discussed before when we right click here and also delete the same thing and then we have export video which we will look into towards the end of this tutorial and then finally video properties so this is the part that we skipped now in here what actually matters is this trim and time and timeout time let's say we don't want to start the video right from the beginning let's say we want to start it from the 20th second onwards this is where we can change it and then click OK. So now if we move this playhead here and hit play. See, we are starting from the 20th second of this video. Now do note that we don't have to open the video properties window every time we want to change the timing like this. As you can see here, this is the trim in time and this is the trim out time. 
Let's say we only want a small portion of this video from 20 seconds to 25 seconds. We can simply change it here. 0, 25. That is the 5 seconds that we want. And if we hit enter, you can see this is the 5 seconds that we selected. Now to reset the timings, we do have to open up the video properties window. And from there we can reset the timing. And you can see the values get changed. Now once I click OK, the video goes back to its original full duration. Now let me change this time to frame numbers to show you something. So if the focus is on the video view, then you can use the arrow keys to move across single frames. You can also use the plus and minus in the numpad. Now if you use those keys with a combination of control key together, then we can move across frames in an increment of 5. You can also simply use the square bracket to do the same. All right. Now I'm going to bring up the finished version of this project so that I can give you this tip. This short film needed two musical pieces and I wrote them in the same project because they are very similar. However, if you are required to write multiple pieces of music that are quite different from each other for the same video, then it might be better to do it in different projects. Like you won't have to deal with all this tempo automation for the different musical pieces, then time signature differences, and also the monstering issues that we might face because of the tonal or sonic difference between them. All right, now let me show you how we can export a video file from Cakewalk. We can do that by either right clicking in the video thumbnail pane, then going into export video or going into file, export video, both of which are going to give this window. Here we can give a name and then choose a file format. Now the export settings or the file formats can be seen here. If we click here, we get a little bit of control over the encoding. And then if we click on the audio mix down options, we can control how the actual Cakewalk project will be exported into audio before it gets combined into a final video file. However, we don't export video files from those because they are digital audio workstations. There's not much for video there. So we export the project into audio files based on the requirements for the next step of the whole production. And this may or may not be influenced by the local film industry standards. So here is the previous video in this tutorial series, which you can refer to get your audio outs based on your particular requirements. And with that, this is ADK and I'll see you later.